welcome to the Concordia College Football Show with Coach Terry Horan. I'm your host, Norman Bell. Terry, you guys got off to a fast start again this Saturday against Hamlin. Tell me, what was the message going into this game? Well, we, we certainly wanted to take off where we left off with Augsburg and continue to just uh, build that trust with, uh, with all of our units. And in all three phases, I thought... Uh, you know, we, we played pretty well. Our first uh, first couple series offensively took us a little bit to get going, but you know, once our D's got us the ball back, uh, um, we just started kind of rolling, and it was it was good to see. We we got that passing attack going, which we wanted to establish and and uh, and be more two dimensional, which was which was good. Okay, now let's go out and take a look at those first half highlights. All right. Now you start out with the ball. There you go. Boys coming out. Maroon on maroon. Maroon on maroon. Yeah, it's good luck. Look at that video board. <laughs> thing is sweet. We just love uh, love the energy and the atmosphere that uh, that brings. Here we go. Opening uh, KOR. We didn't get tucked inside there, and consequently, what ended up happening is we got a little tug on the shoulder and we got a holding penalty. So uh, that brought us back. First play. Um, well, this wasn't the first play. But it was it was the third down play to. Tried to get Jordan Spath up the sideline. We come out punting, um, and uh, Berge just continues to uh, get some pretty good boomers, doesn't he? Yeah, he just yeah. he's got a great leg. Great defensive pressure. I mean, the slew of our guys getting in there. Willie Julks was in there, looked like Tick, and even Noah Welsh. Noah Welsh had another big day for us. Just rallying to the ball there. Mason Griefy looking sharp there. Uh, a little rugby punt, got down about the 50-yard line, so here we go, right to Kevin Marzloff on a little hitch play, and it's yards after catch. It's one of my favorite stats, and, and uh, he was able to do that for about a 15-yard uh, play, and here's a nice catch, nice play, a little play-action pass, and Kevin in the back of the end zone gets another, another TD, and TK popping it through the uprights, 7-0. Claussen had a pretty good day kicking the ball too, and uh, that one goes through into the end zone. And again, our KO coverage was outstanding. We had three tackles inside the 20-yard line, and those are big play performances by us. And and so we were able to reach that goal again this week. Here's uh, one of the few punts that he actually has has hit pretty good, and it kind of put us back a, a little ways. But then Alex Berg kind of flipped the field for us and. Coach, that could have went down as an all-time record for a punt. Well, right, Mason Griefy picks that thing up, <laughs> and I was like, let that thing roll. What was it, a 68-yarder? Yeah. I mean, I think that had 70 written over all over it. Look at our guys getting to the football. Our Ds have just been playing really great, great football for us. And, uh, I mean, holding a team to 37 yards of total offense, 10 rushing yards, 25, 27 passing yards, that's fantastic for a day. There's Blake Craigness uh, running up on our little option play. Hits Kevin on, just slices one in there. Kevin made a great catch on a little backside post, and there he is, QB sneaking into the end zone. Kevin Marsloff doing, is doing that number six a good job. Yeah, he is. Uh, that number six has been pretty special to the Cobbs with Zilly wearing it a few years ago, and now, now Kevin. Kevin's a special receiver. He just works his tail off, and, and uh, happy to see him him getting some big plays here. Here's KO coverage. Look at Trey Oswald coming down, doing a little lasso wrap and looking good. Justice Spriggs, um, really a solid quarterback. You know, guys played four years for Hamlin, and our guys were swarming him all day. He didn't have much room to breathe. There's a punt, goes out of bounds, but gives us pretty good field position. We got a little sprint out action here. Nice throw, a little bit behind, but Kevin adjusts to it really nice and, and made a great grab. Here's a little reverse play on a fourth down and three, and they were pursuing so hard for us that we just decided to come back with the reverse. That's Matt By in the end zone for his second tutty of his career, and uh, his other Moorhead spud product, uh, Bundy, was trying to lead the way there. <laughs> Bundy comes back to the sideline, and he has like, almost an inhaler look to him, <laughs> like he needs some sort of inhaler. I said, what are you doing? Coach, I ran a long way. There's a great pop by Dan Johnson. I just I love the way that kid plays. There's another punt, and uh, this is Will Burning, and, and Will Burning had two 16-yard punt returns for us 
Um, really did a nice job catching the ball. Here's Riley Sheridan doing what Riley Sheridan does best. He got out on the perimeter. We had great perimeter blocks, and away he went into the end zone. I think he, it was, he has deceptive speed. He does. He yeah, does. You let him get to that corner, it's going to be tough to catch him. Yep, yep, he does. And he, and he puts his foot in the ground and changes directions better than a lot of backs that I've ever seen here. There was another deep kick. It was inside the five-yard line, and and uh, guys corralled it nice. I think this is the pick to take. Yeah, look at that. Oh, Taylor just jumping in front of that. That's sweet. Gets us down in another short field situation, and uh, we score again, 35 nothing. Another kickoff. The Gonzos are out there again. We had another busy day. It's two weekends in a row that uh, here he sp split the seam on us a little bit, and and uh, something that you know we need to take a peek at. But um, our D's came back out and 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 did what we've been doing really well all day. So a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on him. And punters back out doing his little rugby style. And Will did a nice job of catching it. Here's another about a, another 16-yard gainer for us. Puts our offense back to midfield. Nice little play here by Mike Heitzman. Little slice, slice option play of ours that he, he juked back outside. Here's one of our freshmen, Peyton Mortensen out of Lacaparo Valley, doing a great job. And here's Blake getting in the end zone. Yeah, that safety didn't stand a chance there once no. he dropped that shoulder. Right, right. <laughs> they did a nice job pressuring us. Something that uh, you know we have to adjust and work on, do a little bit better as our as our protection. Um, and we'll, we'll get there. The okay. To nothing. Yeah. So what was the message again this week going into the locker room with a 41 to nothing lead? Well, I went with the offensive staff right out when we got in the locker room and just kind of talked about, you know, what do we want to do? We weren't going to have our starters go back out. You know, we're up pretty healthy. No need for those guys to play the second half. Let's get our guys that work so hard every week in practice to get some opportunities. So we were deciding who we were going to go with. And then just to get them ready. And I think defensively, you know, I think that last series of Hamlin had, I don't think our defensive staff was very happy with, with some of the ad-libbing that was going on, guys just kind of doing their own thing and not, and not staying to their assignment the way they've been coached to do it. Mm -hmm. So I know Coach Bach and the staff really honed in with the, with the guys about doing your job and your responsibility and then to get everybody ready to go that, that last 30 minutes. Okay. When we return, we'll take a look at the second half highlights with a special ending. Touchdown! So, Terry, you guys are up 41 to nothing at halftime. It's easy to get complacent with a lead like that, but you were fortunate enough to get a lot of young guys some playing time here in the second half. Yeah, we really were, and really in the two phases, offensively, defensively, um, you know, within our special teams, we, we still were trying to keep our, our top crew out there. Um, um, but yeah, both sides of the ball, we got a lot of guys out there. I think offensively, we had 18 different ball carriers oh, in wow. this game, and you know, we rushed for what, 300 and 93 yards and and uh, so it was a great day at the office and and I, like I said earlier you know these guys worked their tails off all week long too and and some of them that got into the game were scout players for our D and uh, but it's just good to get you know get a lead like this so others mm -hmm. can play and and be a part of the whole game day atmosphere okay well I'm gonna test some of your knowledge of the numbers here of your players yeah right let's go put ahead me on the spot and have highlights All right, so we uh, we kicked off. We had the wind at our back. He kind of low line drived it, went right to uh, one of their better returners, and and but Jace Johnson did a nice job at uh, making a play on that. Again, here we were. They ran a little inside zone play right on the first play, and our D's just got after it. There's good pressure off the edge there. It's Angel Ledesma, one of our freshmen, did a nice job. Good pressure there by Anthony Hale. He gets off a pretty decent punt, and, and we're petering out of there pretty fast. But ball's at midfield, and here we go. Simon Weller is our quarterback that got the nod. We've been kind of alternating our sophomore quarterbacks, and 
pitched it out here to Peyton Mortensen, and I think it was on that play they got us on a legal uh, look at Andy Grabdahl uh, cutting and slicing and dicing into the end zone. I mean, Gatorade Player of the Year out of West Fargo High School and certainly is going to have a nice career here at Concordia, that's for sure. All right, we're up 48 nothing now, and uh, our Gonzals are back on the field and, and did a nice job of making a big play behind the 20-yard line. It's a battle of field position now. We catch the ball. We're right back around the midfield. There's Sean keeping it around the, uh, the corner, and he gets all the way into the end zone. He was pulling and tugging that reed. He was not going to give that <laughs> ball up. I gave him the business when he got to the sideline. Coach, it was the right read. It was the right read. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a dandy. We got we have some great kids. A lot of fun. And I would just about do it for the second half. And yeah, here, here's that special ending. To yeah, this half. is this is fantastic. Where uh, Gunnar Coleman, our senior defensive lineman, quite a long time, and and Gunnar asked me this summer if uh, we could pull this off, and absolutely, I said, be great to get it up on the big screen. And then he told all his brothers on Friday after our walkthrough and just so they weren't caught off guard. And, and what a pretty special moment this is. Uh, it was great to see their excitement and her excitement. Yeah. And so, and then we sang the school song and, and it was all pretty sweet. Yeah. Well, his mom wasn't gonna let me miss this. <laughs> She's been talking to me about it since the first game of the season and multiple text messages and things coming through. So pretty sweet. congrats to those two guys. Yeah, absolutely. Our whole program uh, wishes them well, great people. And it's pretty exciting. Look at the excitement there, it's awesome. Gunner just like, yeah, they pulled it off, man. So it's good. <laughs> When we return, we'll talk to special teams coordinator, Brian Mistro. I'm now joined by special teams coordinator, Brian Mistro. Brian, thanks for joining the show, man. Uh, no problem, always a pleasure. All right, so special teams coordinator, tell me what, what goes into to having a really good game. What would you consider a really good game special team wise? Uh, a really good game for us is just being prepared in all facets of the game, mm -hmm. uh, especially within the special teams groups. So for us, there's a lot of film prep that goes into that, and we, we have walkthroughs, we have full live sessions on it. We do a lot of good stuff within our special teams, and for us to have a successful special teams day, we have certain goals that we want to hit, and when we reach those goals, then it's a good day. If we don't, then we need to keep working at it. All right. is, it is it a curse or a blessing to have three specialists person specifically for kickoff, person specifically for field goals and extra points, and a person specifically for punting. Well, there's a couple of things that go into it. For me, it's, it's hey, be good at your craft. And if we have three guys that are good at their craft and they don't have to worry about anything else, then they can keep mastering that craft. And it, and it takes away from the field goal kicker that's got to worry about punting, that's also got to worry about what we're doing on kickoff. So for me, it's good to have some of those things that you have a kid that can specifically work on his craft all day because that season, that's all he's doing. And, and obviously they all do some stuff within the beginning of practice where they're doing multiple things than just their one specific kicking job. But uh, for us, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Now a very important position and on the special teams is long snapper. And like you, that sometimes that's hard to find, but you, you have Matt By who's still there, but Angel Ledesma has taken on some of the duties as, as long snapper. How nice is it to have a, a, a first-year player come in and get some experience in that area. Well, he's just – there's something that's really awesome about Angel. I call him Ann Hell. He, he's, my, <laughs> he's my guy. But uh, he doesn't care. Like, there's, he doesn't feel that pressure. He doesn't have that sort of, well, the whole team's leaning on me to make sure this is a perfect snap. He goes out there, he ties his shoes, and he says, and it's gone. And, and he doesn't, doesn't worry about it. He gets down and does his job, and, it, and it's great to have a guy like that. So hopefully we can keep – him having that mentality as the years go along. But, yeah, he's, he's been a great addition to that. Now, you also handle the duties of a secondary defensive backs coach. You have a pretty good group back there in, in your secondary right now. Well, if you ask them, they think I think that they're terrible, the way that I coach <laughs> them up. We're always trying to strive to get better, right? And, and there's little intricacies of, of what we do. And I don't care how – how the stats end up or anything like that, I need to make sure that we're all doing our job. And what the stats don't show is when, you know, if we blow a coverage, but they just didn't throw to that guy. Well, now it's still me chewing on him saying, hey, right. 
just because they didn't throw to that guy doesn't mean that we sc didn't screw up. And so, you know, I'm always looking to make sure that our guys are 100% on their assignment and, and their technique. And for the most part, we got a pretty veteran group that has played a lot of football for us. And, uh, you know, they know how I'm going to coach them. So before they even come off the field or before we get in for halftime or anything like that, yeah, coach, I got it. I got it. He's like, well, I don't care. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> so, so get ready. But, no, I got a great group of kids. I mean, we rotate through. Um, you know, we don't have guys go out there to start the game starters right but for me i have eight guys that can start any football game so it's awesome and i was going to touch on that you play a lot of guys in the secondary from seniors to freshmen you you play a lot you know it's part of me is i played db when i was in college i don't know if i was any good or not but if you're on you're on the field and you cover a 60 yard post and then you run back and they sub out a wide receiver and, and you just got done running 120 yards back like you're tired like we yeah. for me i got to have guys that are fresh to go from the very beginning so if you if you have a longer drive or a longer play like next guy up like get your get off the field get a shot of water make sure you're focused up for the next time you're in and so that way everyone's involved in the game the worst thing that i remember about playing was you play two or three series and then you don't play for like four or five because you have like a series rotation like for me it's it's really hey whenever we need you we're getting you in um, we try to rotate you know every other series depending on who's got a hot hand and who's making the right reads and the right calls i tend to lean towards that person a little bit more um, but for the most part we've had pretty balanced attack on uh, at the secondary i'm sure the guys appreciate having a coach that has actually played that position so so the coach can relate to to maybe what's going on out there well i, I was better than all of them when, okay, when okay, i played okay. they know that okay yeah, I'm, sure you made, <laughs> I'm sure you made them aware of that no it, it's it's fun to go back and look and, and put myself in their shoes and say all right i remember doing this kind of so you know what's the easiest way for me to relate to them on how to do it and, and for the most part I think you know we've done a pretty good job as a group because it's a two-way street right like they only know what you can coach them you might have all the knowledge in the world as a football coach but it's what you can teach them and, and if they don't learn it then you're you're a bad football coach and so for me if the more that I can relate to them and like hey I, this is what I how I used to do it or how you know things that I've seen in the past but as long as they can execute on the field that's that's the most important thing I got you now Let's move ahead to your family. Your your wife Megan is uh, she's not able to be as uh, fan. Uh, how how do I say it? She she's Mama Hawk. Yeah, she can't participate as much <laughs> because she's got a little AJ running around there. Right. And he won't sit still. No. So she used to have her spot in the stands, uh, and now they're not in the stands anymore because he can't sit down. So she actually, I got. I got a little upset with her. She went on to Amazon and bought one of those huge tents, and she sits it over in by the new scoreboard, and uh, the wind blew it away yesterday, so we got to oh. buy a new tent anyway. So I'm a little upset about that. But no, she, she's still obviously just a huge part of, of, of my life, and a lot of our, you know, the DBs call her Mama Hawk. I've kind of alluded to that, but she's, she's as into it as anybody that I've ever met. And uh, um, as far as Copper football goes, she's, she, she loves it, and I think that's something that's really cool. You know, and then the little man, he's... I don't, he doesn't know anything yet, but he, he likes seeing that on the field. It's pretty fun. Right. I'm sure all those people around and stuff, and then, you know, I'm, I'm sure it is an, an awesome atmosphere for him to be in. Oh, yeah, and he ain't shy. He'll go up right up to you now and eh, come get me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for joining me, Brian. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, Norm. That was defensive backs coach and special teams coordinator Brian Mistro. I'm now joined by senior defensive back Jake Airholtz. Jake, thanks for joining me, man. Hey, glad to be here, Norm. A Moorhead kid that played for Archbishop <laughs> Shanley. Yep. Is it Archbishop Shanley? Um, you know, you're going to have to ask Mr. Hagstrom. He's probably going to be on me about not remembering my whole uh, history of the diocese okay. stuff, but okay. I honestly couldn't tell you. Okay, I thought it was Archbishop Shanley, but we're just going to go with Shanley. That's Legendary what Bishop. Yeah. That's all you got to know. Okay. What's it like, man? Senior year, you got a lot of younger guys out there. You're coaching them up out there. You're kind of like a coach on the field as, as a safety there. What's your senior year been like so far? Uh, fast. I mean, we're only, what, four weeks in? And it feels like it was a blink of an eye. So I'm sure the end of the season is going to come way faster than we want it to. But it's been exciting, too. A lot of fun so far. A lot of, a lot of fun coaching up the young guys, trying to teach them what I can, what I've learned over the years, good and bad. But yeah, it's just, it's been fun so far. 
That's good. So, what are you majoring in? I'm a finance major. Business major with a concentration in finance, but a lot of finance classes, so just numbers and numbers. Okay. Concordia is a really, really tough school, and finance, I mean, not everyone's good with numbers. What's it like juggling sports and, and academics? It's a lot. It can be. Uh, when I first came here, it was... I came as a pre-med major, so I, I mean, I changed my major probably five times before <laughs> I even got to college, and then about five times since then, so, but no, it's just, it's all about when you first get in here, you got to find that thing that really makes you tick, yeah. and for me, that was numbers and finance, and I've fallen in love with it, and you'll be amazed once you find it, reading a textbook really isn't that bad when you're actually invested in it, so, so it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I agree with that. Like, when you first come to college, you're doing all your generals and stuff. But when you get into what you're really into, it, it makes studying a lot easier for you because you're interested. It does, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why Concordia? Uh, well, you know, hometown Moorhead. I grew up seeing the field. Every time I'd bike past or drive past, I'm like, hey, Jake Christian Stadium. My name's on that building. Pretty cool. <laughs> but, no, I guess uh, I just... Knew it was a great place in the town, and then when I first came on my first visit, that's when I met Mistro, and man, we just clicked instantly. It was like, I would love to play for a guy like that, and I knew Haran through our church. We go to the same church, so I knew there was good people here, and there's good communities to, to, to surround yourself with, so it, it all just worked out, and I couldn't have asked for a better four years, so. Okay. Now, Coach Mistro and I touched on this a little bit. What's it like having a coach that has actually played the position? Oh, it's awesome. You can say as much as you want, but until you're really there to experience it and know how everything fits together and whatnot, it's, it's experience you couldn't get anywhere else. So being able to have that first-hand account to how things play out and how they really interact with each other, it's, you can't get anywhere else. Okay. So... A Moorhead, Minnesota kid, but you go to school in Fargo, and that, that's not that uncommon. Like, there's quite a few guys that have come through this program. There are guys that are still in this program that did the same thing. Yeah, it was, well, I grew up at St. Joseph's Catholic School in Moorhead all the way from preschool till eighth grade, so I didn't know anything other than that. But we partnered with Sullivan Middle School at the time over at Shanley, so I got to know a lot of the guys through basketball and football, and it was just kind of a natural transition over there. My mom, actually, she went to St. Joe's, too, so there's that history. Okay. And she wanted to go to Shanley in high school, but she ended up going to Moorhead High. So it was kind of that push from her to, like, live out my dreams through you. So, okay. But, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great transition over there and then into another private school. So I've known nothing but private school my whole life, and I can't say it's a bad thing. So. Yeah, I kind of fit in your boat there a little bit. I, I, I was pretty much private school. So. Mm -hmm. But... The Spuds ever give you a hard time for, for jumping? I, yeah, I did have a lot of friends over at Moorhead because I've grown up in like the youth sports all through Moorhead High, and, mm -hmm. and they give me a lot of grief. They're like, oh, what, you, you can't come play with us or what? And I'm like, no, it's nothing against you. And I, I still played like Legion Baseball with the Blues too, okay. so it was nice to stay in touch with all of those friends even into high school. Gotcha. Now, I'm going to take you back to last year. I think it was last year homecoming, actually. Gustavus. Oh, yeah. That, the play you made really turned the game for us. That, that was a fun game. Well, did, you, did you read that the whole time, or was it just instinct, reaction? It was, well, I, I knew from studying film, the quarterback liked to pick out one or two receivers and throw to them more often than others. But as soon as you see a guy break off a route, it's just natural instinct. And I actually got there expecting to break the pass up. I got there a little earlier than I thought I would, so I caught it. Almost dropped it and then caught it for a second time, and I, I would have got way too much grief if I'd have dropped that. So okay. now, was it last? No, two weeks ago, you did the same thing. No, Nebraska Wesleyan. Wesleyan, you did the same yep. thing on the sideline. You kind of jumped around and, and made a pick. I almost took it in. Yeah, I, I wish I could have slowed down a little bit to keep myself in bounds, but I, I gave myself a hard time about that. I had like eight more yards to go till the end zone, but. No, I just, I just like to read my keys, really just slow the game down. And I'm not, I don't see myself as the biggest or the fastest, but I think I can hold my own when it comes to the smarts of the game. So that's really where I get my two cents from. I got you. Big contest this weekend. St. Thomas coming to town for homecoming there. Yep. Top five in the country. What's the mindset like right now? You just got to attack the week. I mean, these... 
these are the games you really live for. Like it's nice to play Hamlin and teams like that and have a fun day where everybody can play, but as a senior especially, these are the games you really want to play in. It, it's what you wake up for. It's why you come to a school like this that has a legacy and just hasn't been able to get over these juggernauts in the past. So it's going to be an exciting week, that is for sure. And I can't wait to, can't wait to get out there on Saturday. Good luck. I can't wait to see you play. Thank you, man. That senior defensive back, Jake Airholz. <laughs> Welcome back to the Concordia College Football Show with Coach Terry Horan. Homecoming week. Yeah. And you typically try to choose, you know, a fairly reasonable <laughs> opponent for homecoming, yes. but it seems like the, every, you know, couple years we pick the juggernaut. Yeah, two, or th two out of the last three years it's been the big gorilla, but uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, we play, we have to play them sometimes, so we might as well uh, play them in homecoming. We'll get a great crowd, I know that, and um, yeah, obviously they're a very good football team and ranked number three in the country right now. And you look at uh, their three wins that they have, uh, they've only given up seven points. Um, and, and yeah, they're, they're good in all three phases. Uh, they're well coached, uh, they got great athletes. Um, it's just gonna be an exciting matchup for us. Yeah, we, match, we typically match up well with them the past three years that I've been involved in the program. Matched up pretty well. Last year kind of got away from us. We lost a couple of key starters early on, but I'd say they, they come to play when they go against Concordia. Well, I, absolutely. You got two, you know, two football programs that have a prideful uh, tradition, and, and um, we certainly um, you know, obviously love playing St. Thomas and, and the challenge that it brings, and, and, and that's exciting. That's why we, we go out in our, our non-conference and play the type of teams that we play, like Whitewater, and prepares us well from, from a physicality standpoint and, and a competitive standpoint and also the atmosphere and, and the challenge that that game brought to us. You know, we, um, we certainly need to play better. We need to be, you know, sound in all three phases. And um, we've got a challenge in front of us. But homecoming is always special and we've got a lot of highlights. Obviously, we're dedicating our video board to the six donors and everybody that was a part of that prior to the game. We've got our 1978 national championship team coming back uh, to be a part of this, and Coach Dave Klug was on that yeah. uh, on that team, so that'll be exciting. And we've got our Hall of Fame inductees. We've got two former football players that are getting inducted uh, after the game. Adam Strainer was a former wide receiver. I actually coached him when I was an assistant coach and, and wide receiver coach. Um, he was also a very good track athlete too. And then Mark yeah. Hankel, a defensive end. Um, it was a very uh, tough defensive player for us, too. Those two guys graduated in, in 2001, uh, right before I came in as the head coach. But okay. they um, great guys, great additions to, uh, to the Football Hall of Fame, that's for sure. Yeah, this weekend is going to be an event. And that, that's pretty much when you know you've made it as a program, when your, your games turn into events. There's going to be a lot going on at the Jake this Saturday. Food trucks outside, yeah. and there's so many things going on. It'd be a great opportunity for for people to bring their families out to come check us out. Yeah, you'll get the parade. I mean, all the, the small, just the collegiate pageantry that goes into homecoming and all these old school traditions. We got the bonfire, you got the fireworks uh, on Thursday night. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a festive week. Also, I might add, we've got John By and Eric By, brothers to Matt By, that are coming back and they're gonna be our chapel speakers. Uh, this Saturday prior to our game, and, and remember now our homecoming game is always our Joshua Shield Day. So they'll be talking about the Shield of Faith and, 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 and Joshua and the story of Joshua, and then all of our new guys will be getting their shields. And 78 team uh, is invited to that, so we're going we're gonna to have a house full. It should be fun. Cobbers take on the Tommies this Saturday at 1 o'clock. This has been the Concordia College Football Show with Coach Terry Horan.